of Richland Hills Library. I'm one of the soft craft instructors in their maker spot. We're all supposed to wear masks when we go out in public now. We've been asked, how do I make a mask? I'm going to teach you how to make a mask, but I'm going to do a disclaimer. The masks that I'm going to show you how to make are not as effective as the N95 mask that the doctors and nurses are wearing, but it will help supplies we need. We need two seven inch pieces of quarter inch elastic. You need one six by seven inch piece of cotton flannel. And the reason I'm using cotton flannel is it has more surface area so it can catch more particles. And we're using two pieces of cotton quilters fabric. Quilters fabric is woven tighter than normal cotton fabric and it will catch more particles. The first thing we're going to do is get one of the pieces of cotton, lay it print side down, get your piece of cotton flannel, center it on your piece of cotton, kind of flatten it out, and we're going to sew down the edges. And I'm just going to use a quarter inch seam. Be sure and hold your end threads so they don't not up on the other side. And I'm going to cut both ends. Then we're going to do the other side. Catch your threads again. Now we're going to Put this where the flannel side is down, the print side is up. We're going to get our pieces of cot of elastic. And working on the short sides, you're going to get your pins. And you're going to pin the elastic about a half inch from the edge. Then making sure that the elastic is flat, do it on the other side, about half an inch also. Get your other short side of your fabric and do the same thing. Okay. This time, get your other piece of cotton fabric, put the print side down so that both print sides face each other, center it on the other piece, and we're going to put a three inch opening in here. And to mark where our opening is, we're going to get pins and each of my squares is about one inch. So I'm going to put one pin here, one pin here, I'm going to repin my elastic through both layers. Once you have all of that pinned, what you're going to do now is you're going to sew all the way around your edges, leaving the opening open. So go to your sewing machine and start at one side. Put your presser foot down, and I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to take the pins out as I go, and when you start, be sure and go a few stitches forward and then back stitch so that you reinforce the seam so that it doesn't come undone. When you're almost to your corner, put the needle down in the, the fabric. Lift your presser foot, turn your corner, start stitching again. Be sure you don't stitch over your pins. Pull them out as you go. When you get to the elastic, back stitch over it also. This will help reinforce it.
I'm going to back stitch over the elastic again. Get to my corner. Turn the corner. Go down this side. Get to my corner and stop with the presser foot turn again. And make sure my elastic is staying down. One thing you're going to do right now is you're going to finger fold this opening down. Just fold it and kind of press it with your fingernail. And then I'm going to fold it over the other side and do the same thing on the other side. You're going to get your scissors and you're going to trim the corners, but be careful you don't cut the corners or cut the threads on the corners. And the reason I'm cutting the corners is to reduce the bulk. When I turn this inside out, your corners will be open more. Okay. Now we're going to take this and we're going to turn it to where the printed side is going to come out. And we can pull the elastic out too. And you can use the elastic to help pull the corners. You can also use it, one of these point turning tools, or if you don't have one of these, you can use a pencil or a pen with a cap, and you just gently go to the corner and poke so that it becomes a nice square corner. Same thing on the other side. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my iron and iron it, the seams flat. And I'm going to pin my opening closed. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to get a ruler and we are going to put some pins in on the short side. We're going to put a pin in at one and a half inches, a pin in at two inches, pin in at three and a half inches and one at four inches and I'm going to turn this around and do it on the other side also. These are what we're going to use for marking our folds that we're going to do. We're going to take the first pin here. It's going to go on the inside 
the second pin is going to fold up to the outside so that we have a fold like this. We'll take one of the pins, put it to hold our fold, take that pin out. Same thing with the other. You want your both folds going the same direction. Once you get that, put your pin in to hold it. We're going to do the same on the other side, but we want to make sure that these folds go the same direction as these folds. So, we're going to have that pin there, that pin there, and yes, that will have the fold going the same way. Pin it, take the extra pin out. Do the same thing and what we're doing is we're putting in like about a half inch fold on each of these now what we're going to do and we're almost finished is we are going to sew all the way around what we have the edge now and I'm going to use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance this time I'm going to start near one of the corners and start sewing. Be sure to backstitch and sometimes you're because of the thickness the fabric may not go so you might need to give it a little extra help. There we go. When I get near my corner again I'm going to put the needle down turn my corner so along this side, and because where the elastic is, you're going to need to go fairly slow so your machine can catch everything. Remember to take your pins out as you go because if you sew over them, you just might break a needle. I'm going to sew the fold, and I like to backstitch a little bit over the fold to give it some additional support and reinforcement. going, take your pin out, and all this sewing here is what, why we did the flannel a little bit shorter than the other pieces, because all this extra, that would have given even more bulk here and made it a little bit more difficult to do. Go down the long side. And get to the corner. Turn the corner. Go up the other side. And flip your threads. And you now have a mask that you can wear. It'll go over your nose, your chin, and go over your ears. Now, some of you are wondering, well, what if I don't have flannel? Use an extra piece of the cotton fabric cut six inches to seven inches. If you don't have quarter inch elastic, you can use the corded elastic. Be sure to put a knot in each end. You're going to use seven inches, but be sure to put a knot in each end so that when you're sewing it, this knot will be end up on the inside and will help keep the elastic from pulling all the way out. If you don't have elastic, you can make a mask with ties. What I've used here is extra wide double fold bias tape. And what it actually looks like, it's a two inch strip of cotton fabric where you fold, fold the fabric in half and then fold the two edges in and fold it like this and then when you sew it on here you're going to measure out 36 inches and go to where 18 inches is put it right here right here and then pin it on here you'll need to sew the entire strip so start at the bottom back stitch go sew all of this closed 
go over your mask, go all the way to the other side, back stitch on the ends again, do the same on both sides, and then you'll have a mask that you can tie. If you don't have double fold bias tape, you can always also use ribbon. You can use 3 8 inch ribbon or a quarter inch ribbon. You now have, know how to make a mask. I am going to remind you again, these are not as effective as the N95 mask, but it helps. Remember, you still need to do your social distancing, wash hands frequently, and limit your trips away from home. Thank you.